look at that verse and we look at it, I, I said to you last week, I said that, you know, this week we'll break it down a little bit more and we'll go through it. And it starts off with a word that we've gone through many times before, the word therefore. And if you haven't heard me say this before, always remember this. When you see the word therefore in the Bible, always find out why it is, what it is there for. It is therefore in this context to remind us what has happened before. And what has happened before are those 11 chapters. The 11 chapters. So when we look at it, when Paul is saying, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, based on everything that has happened up to that point, from chapters 1 to 11. And what happened there? Paul talked about what God has already done for us. Everything that God has already done for us. And we find here, if I had to paraphrase that word, therefore, into a few more words, Paul is saying to us, see, we have received all these that we don't deserve. And I urge you, brothers and sisters. So when we're seeing that therefore, Paul is saying to us, hey, you know what? We have received all these that we don't deserve. And then he goes on to the next word, which is, by the mercies of God. Therefore, by the mercies of God. And what are the mercies of God? These are the things that Paul has already spoken about in Romans chapter 1 to 11. The mercies of God, as you will read in chapters 1 to 11, highlight grace, that our sins are forgiven. God has given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us His love. He's given us His faith. And there's so many verses in Romans that speak about that from chapter 1 to 11. I mean, just on love. In Romans chapter 8, what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Romans 8, 1. There is now no condemnation for us that are in Christ Jesus. So these are the mercies of God, that God does not condemn us when we are in Christ. When we are in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. The mercy of grace, all in the Bible, from chapter 1 to 11. And what is, what is grace? We all know the famous uh, definition of grace. Grace is getting what we don't deserve, getting what we haven't earned. But what is mercy? Mercy is not getting what we deserve. And that, that's the difference. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. But mercy is not getting what we deserve. Because of the penalty of sin, we deserved death. We deserved God's judgment. But by the mercies of God, we've received grace. We've received forgiveness of sins. We've received entry into God's love and the faith that God has given us. And Paul is saying, therefore, by all of these mercies, I ask you now to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Because of all that God has done for us, Paul is saying, hey, what does it mean? Again, your whole being, not part, but the whole of you. And when you look at historically the Old Testament, the Jews were very familiar with the sacrifice. But their familiarity with the sacrifice was that a sacrifice was always dead. When it was presented, it had to die. They were not familiar with a living sacrifice. And this is why the New Testament now, God is saying there's no more dying now. Because He's paid the price through Jesus Christ. He's died once and for all. That we don't have to offer up any more dead sacrifices but it's, a, it's more than a once-off. Because in the Old Testament, it was a once-off dead animal sacrifice. But now God is saying He wants an ongoing living commitment to Him. And we find that so beautifully captured in the, in the story of Abraham and Isaac. Where Abraham was asked to sacrifice Isaac. And as he was about to sacrifice him, God substituted Isaac with a... With a, with a ram. And from there, we get to see the picture of what a living sacrifice is about. God wants you to live for Him. 
He wants you to be available for Him 24-7. Philippians 1.21, Paul captures that when he says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And that's what it's about. Giving everything for God and leaving it all out in this world. You know, there's a lovely saying that says, Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. And I want to encourage you today that when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's only one death, uh, there's only one birth that we will experience, um, not just in the natural, but in, in the spiritual as well, that born again. So it's two births. But there's only one death that we're going to face. And that's the death here in the natural. And that is why when we look at our loved ones that have gone to be with the Lord, uh, we don't mourn with hopelessness. We mourn with hope and expectation that we will see them again. And that hope can only come from a living relationship with Jesus Christ. So even as we've taken communion and we've come around the Lord's table and, and Brian has, has uh, shared with us from 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 28, you know, verse 28 is very clear. It says, let us examine ourselves. And that's important. You know, Paul has come to this point now in Romans chapter 12 and, and he's looking back at everything that God has done for us, the mercies of God. And he's pretty much saying, but hey, hold on, let's, let's examine ourselves now. How do we live now? God has made available grace. He's made available His love. He's made available His faith. He's made available no condemnation. He's made available the way to heaven. But how do we live now? Let us examine ourselves. How do we live? Last week we sang a lovely song that uh, speaks about this verse, Romans 12, 1. And I thought it's only fitting that um, we close again with that song there. But uh, before I close, I just want to pray. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your word is A and Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you ask us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would make it holy and acceptable in your sight. Lord, we know that we come short. We know, Lord, that we, we don't live up to your expectations. But we thank you, Lord, that we come today and we offer up our life to you as a living sacrifice.